Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. Today I wanted to show you a new background that I've just created for the scenic background section on the website. I've created this uh, painted background in 10 different colors, I believe, different color tones. So depending on uh, what your subject is and what kind of color tone it calls for, you'll have several choices to use with this background. Um, let's get right into it here. I'm going to show you. This is the painted background. It has some grass and it's got some nice painterly brush strokes in the background. Um, and these are perfect for wildlife. And that is exactly why I created them. I made a recent trip to the zoo over in Memphis and got a lot of great shots. And I just need more backgrounds to put these animals in that look a little better than the ones that they're in. So I've decided uh, for this video and this example, I wanted to show you how to work with one of my zoo animals with this new background. And I wanted to show you with one of the lions. Now this isn't too bad of a background here. Um, I don't like the tree going right through the middle of her head though. Uh, which is why I choose to use the backgrounds I do to get rid of things like that and, and just give it a more artistic look, kind of a cross between a painting and a photo. I have a lot of people ask me, was well, that a photo? Or And others will ask me, if that's, is that a painting? And the answer is basically yes to both because it is a combination of both. Um, I think this takes photography there's you know photographs like this even if this tree wasn't here and this was a nice blurred background how many photos of lions and other animals do you see out there there's thousands maybe millions that people have taken and I like to combine them with my textured backgrounds to like this to really create a work of art out of that photo to to bring it up one step higher the world stand out just a little bit more than your traditional photograph that everybody has done um, so today we're going to try to work with this lion um, there is grass as you can see in the bottom of this um, this one that I've made and I really like these because it gives my animals uh, a sense of place uh, I often because I shoot with a large lens even though this right here was shot with a 300 normally I'm shooting with a 500 um, or 600 millimeter but at the zoo we can be so much closer to the animals I don't need that type of focal length but even my 300 as you could tell was too close I and mean, this is the actual shot right out of the camera and as you can see I cut her legs off and her back off so um, in order to take away from that, we're going to use this background with the grass. We're going to put her legs in the grass. There's been some people that have had trouble with this. Um, this does involve masking. And if you're not real good at masking, it may be a struggle for you to use this type of background at first. But the more you practice, the better you get. And I'm hoping that with this video, you can see how I do it and how you can see the process of it it's it's basically a painterly type process it's not cut and paste um you're basically painting uh, the image away to reveal the grass underneath and you're then you're painting it back um back in, it's a back and forth thing to make it look right it does take a little more time when you're using a background like this um so it's not quite as quick as some of the other textures might be. Um, it just depends on how much you want to work, whether you'll find this type of background useful. It This one does take a little more time, though. But um, let's get to this line and see what I want to do. And I've already been messing around with her, and I'll lower the opacity on her to see where I want to place her. Now I could enlarge her. Um, because of the way the we've got this big splash of light here and the light coming down here um, and she's got this light on her face here 
So because of that, I think I'm going to turn her around. Plus, I like my animals to face from right to left. So I'm going to flip her. Oh, and I'm working in Topaz Photo FX Lab, by the way, which is the host program for all the other Topaz modules that you can purchase. Um, it's uh, my favorite program. I use PaintShop Pro, Corel PaintShop Pro 10, a very old version of it. Even though I have the newer version, I prefer this old one because it's a lot simpler. I use that as my host program to um, open up uh, Photo FX Lab. I go in through there. But really all I'm using PaintShop Pro for is a way to get into Photo FX Lab, even though I can use it as a standalone. I go in through PaintShop Pro in case I want to do something later, like sharpen or crop or something I miss after I finish with this. Um, I'll be still in a painter program without having to reopen it. But So that's the software I'm using. I'm on the main screen here, Photo FX Lab, and we have these little tabs over here to do different things. I'm going to be, right now I'm on the tools where I can move her around, and I click on Move here, and I can grab and kind of position her where I want. And like I said, I like to lower the opacity so I can see now see that, if I place her right there, um, the thickest part of the grass is right here. So I'd like to place the bottom of her leg at the thickest part of the grass. I don't want to put her all the way down here, because that would just be a lot more masking to get that grass to come over her. I want to just put it, the bottom part right down at the thickest part of the grass. We're going to try it anyway. The beauty of working in layers like this is you can always move things around later and change things up. Um, my bottom layer is the textured background, painted background. The top layer is the lion. As I mask away her background, it's going to reveal the, the textured background underneath. Okay, so I've got her where I think I want her. Now, I'm going to go to the masking tab. And I have brush value all the way to the left, which is going to uh, take away this. I need to put my flow all the way up. That's like opacity. If you're using Photoshop or PaintShop Pro to do masking, uh, when I first start masking to get rid of a background, I just go at it with full opacity to get most of the excess away, the parts I, <coughs> excuse me, the parts I don't want. And I just, as I get in closer, I'll make my brush smaller. I'm just going over like this and under her belly and right up around her leg under her chest and I'm going to go right over her whiskers um, and I'll show you uh, about dealing with whiskers later. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to whiskers as long as the viewer sees a little bit of whisker showing they will assume that the whiskers there you don't need to show it exactly or at least I don't feel I do now I'm going to make this brush size a little smaller and come in closer around her edges and try to get rid of this black edge here she's got a very dark background and I'm going to get rid of all of this Bring that right over her back. And then I'm going to come down here, and I'm not going to worry about those uh, stra uh, strands of hair coming off of her eyes. Maybe those are some kind of side whiskers, I guess. Try to get a little smaller brush and get in around this eye. One thing I do like to keep sharp is the eyes. Okay, that's, uh, get down under here. Mm. Like that. That's pretty good, but this looks a little choppy here. We need to bring some of this grass over her leg. So I'm going to do that. Um, now I'm going to bring... Let's see, I'm going to bring the flow down, which is the opacity, because uh, this is a gentle process. You don't want to do this 
real harsh or you'll end up with um, something like this which you can do a little bit of but you don't want to do too much of it it looks too strong so I'm gonna take this back out that I've done right here now um, when you put your on topaz when you put the brush value this way you are bringing back her background and when you put it this way you are taking it away completely because the opacity is all the way up now I'm bringing the opacity down fairly low and I'm just going to start gently um, basically I'm taking away her uh, off of her layer and revealing the the grass layer just very softly right over her fur and this is also going to bring some of this green onto her fur that is behind those blades of grass but that's okay because I want her to pick up some of the tones but now I'm getting as you can see right here let me uh, blow this up a little bit see we get in a little closer to the leg as you can see right here I'm losing the leg so I want some of this leg to show so I'm going to make a smaller brush and move the slider all the way to the right which is going to bring her back still going to go with a little bit smaller brush I'm just going to gently bring her back right down in between some of these blades of grass get rid of some of that green on her fur and like I said you don't have to be exact with this you just need to give a hint that those grass blades are coming up over her right now I'm going between the blades the best I can with a very small brush to get rid of the green part that's behind the the golden blades of grass and get over here get some of this fur back now I, I want to see where I'm at as far as the leg where the bottom of the leg is falling so I'm going to raise the opacity up and make a streak now see I'm okay there's there's the bottom of the leg right there so I can come down like that now I'm going to go back the other way and I'm going to bring the brush size down to the very smallest which is 0.01 and bring that opacity back down and I'm going to I'm going to move it up try to get rid of this go like this and just streak away her which is bringing blades of grass from underneath her so I can get rid of this harsh edge here where the where I made those little marks because I don't want the bottom of her leg looking chopped off I'm using the tiniest brush I can right here now let's go in a little closer normally I wouldn't go in this close and worry about this but I know some of you guys have been a little worried about how those blades of grass look now they're looking pretty good um, I do see get on the brush here I do see some green here which I wouldn't worry about I would leave but I'm going to take away some of that by reversing the brush and going back bringing back some of her like this right there where those green areas are I'm just going right in between the blades of grass the best I can like I said it doesn't need to be perfect now you see I see a lot of green right here green tone So I'm going taking that back away. And you could sit here and do this and fiddle with this as, 
I got a lot of green here, so I'm going to raise the opacity. Oops, raise the brush up and bring back some of her normal fur color right there. Now I have, I can see very faintly see some blades of grass up here. Um, I want to make that just a little bit softer. So I lowered the opacity and I'm bringing her back and just kind of masking away the very tips of that grass so it doesn't look as harsh right there. There's just a hint of it there. Now let's back out. Now look at there. It looks like she's standing there. I can still see a little edge right there at the bottom. So we're going to blow that back up to get into that spot. It's right here. So we're going to erase or mask away that pretty strongly. I'm just tapping right now. I've got the opacity all the way up and I'm tapping. Now I'm going to bring the opacity down and just gently tap and scoop up at the same time which fills in some of that that I had taken away before. But you can still see that her leg is in there. Now, let's back out again. Okay, that looks pretty good. And this grass right here is looking really good. It, it just kind of fell where it needed to, kind of barely touching under her belly. Now there's something bugging me about this. And this is why I provide you with different color tones of the scenic backgrounds. Because often, depending on the lighting that our subject is in and the, the way your lens and your camera work, um, different lenses produce different color tones, different lighting produces different color tones, and different cameras will produce different color tones. Um, because she was in the shade on this at this point when I took this picture, her color tones are very cool, even though my lens is on the warmer side as far as what it produces. I've had lens that produce even more of a bluish cast to them than she has right now. But you can see by the warmth of the grass here in the painting, compared to her, this is much warmer than she is. Um, now I can, I have a couple of things I can do here. Um, right now it looks off because she's too cool looking for this background. I can warm her up or at this point I could choose one of the other color tones of the background. So let's, let's do that. I'm going back down under her layer and I'm going to open up uh, one of the, here's the color tones I have available and I'm going to look at her fur. And I'm going to look at these tones. See, I'm using this one, which is lots of green and very warm. Well, she has a, a cooler tone. I don't really want to warm her up. I'd rather keep her natural. Um, this one has some much cooler tones. So we'll open that one up, take a look. Now. Uh, you can see how much of her leg I had gotten rid of right there when I pulled this one up because it filled this in with the color from this one and this color is too pinkish. I don't think that's right for her. So I'm going to delete that one and open a different color. Um, let's try this one. This is number nine. Now that looks pretty good. This is something to consider when you're working with these grass ones and you're trying to blend it. If you can get one that has the grass tones closest to the tones of your subject, it will blend much better. Um, I like this one really well. And I'll turn that off. That's where we were before. Now turn this one back on. This is where we are now. I think I'm going to go with this one. I do need to work here and bring back a little bit more of her fur. I'll lower the brush. And get down in here. I'm still using a very low opacity and a very, very small brush to bring this in. 
basically the brush can create grass out of any background when you're using a brush this tiny and you're just going at it like this. I'm going to raise that opacity up and raise the brush size up here and see what I've got right here. This is where, raise this all the way up. Well, I'm on the wrong layer. No wonder it's not doing anything. All right, let's go back to the line. Uh, opacity down, brush size down, very tiny. Now we're bringing back her fur color in here, right between these little blades of grass. I'll show you here. Let's raise the opacity all the way up. See where I am? See that little tiny line? How about we blow it up? So you can see better. Which is what I would do if I was going to be very picky about it. You see how I did that right there in the very high opacity and it's bringing back her leg. Um, I'm going to take that off Control Z a couple times. Now, let's go. Okay, there's the bottom. So I know where my bottom is. It's right in there. I'm going to take that back off. I'm going to go back to a very tiny brush size, low opacity, and come down just a little bit more right in here. Just to make sure that shows where that leg is. Right between these little blades of grass. Now, here I've gotten away too much grass and I've revealed too much fur right here. Bring this back up. Oops. So you can see. You see how that looks like it's just chopped off. There's not enough grass. We're going to go the other way. And we're going to bring back with the very tiniest brush, I'm going to bring back a little bit higher opacity. Bring back some of this. Just very, very light streaks. There. That's a little better. And I might even go, this one's trying to find my strongest blades of grass. And go ahead and bring those up a little further. There. Might still have a little too much right there. Grass. I'm going to come back down. And trim those up a little bit with this very tiny brush. So see, it's just a back and forth. Now I've gotten a blade that I've broken there. So I'm going back. And I'm going to put it back in. And I'm going to trim it back up very lightly along the edge there. Now that's being real picky. Normally I wouldn't be that picky. Uh, but that looks pretty realistic right there. Alright. Now I see a few other areas here I want to work on. Um, need to mask away a little bit more with a very small brush around these ears. And I'm going to bring the, get rid of the ear partially and bringing, whoops, not that much. I guess I should blow this up where you can see it. I'm control, hitting control Z to undo what I have just done. Okay. Let's go a little bigger with this. All right. I'm going to lower the opacity, make the brush a little bigger, and I'm just going to brush away the edges of the ears and the head, which is going to pull in the texture from underneath and blend it with her. This ear is behind, so it can be a little bit softer. I'm just brushing right over the head and right over the tip and edges of the ear to bring the texture the background right into her fur so she basically becomes one with it. See that black line is gone and I'll, and I'll come on down into her fur a little bit more. 
I got a little bit too much right there, so I'm going to go back the other direction, reduce the brush size, and bring some of this back. Right along the forehead right there. I'm going to make sure that I have the eye in place right there. And the edge of the nose. Make sure I don't have too much texture over that. Okay. Now we're back to uh, removing her and bringing the texture with a very small brush right into her fur. Right between, just like the grass, right between these little pieces of fur here. And like right here we have this little gray spot. I'm going to bring this texture right into there by getting rid of on her layer, I'm getting rid of that spot and just with a very small brush that is fur-like in nature. I'm going right over the whiskers and right into her chin, just bringing the texture right into it. Now, I'm going to make a bigger brush and I'm going to just tap right here, which is going to fade her out. A little more bringing the tone of the texture in. I'm just going all the way around the edges. Now I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to see what happens if I do bring back some of this area with the whiskers. See there's just a hint of them showing. So this is back and forth. Now let me blow this up so you can see the whiskers. There's just a hint of the whiskers showing and that's really all you need because you don't need to sit here and fool with this exactly to get these whiskers because the end viewer is going to assume that the whiskers go down further because they see a little hint of them. You don't need to get your real tiny brush and come down and bring each whisker back. You can if you want to, if you want to be that accurate about it. You can do that, but it's going to be a struggle um, because they're so tiny. And see, I'm getting into the back. This background behind her right here is a black, and that that clashes with this, the uh, golden tones of this. So I really don't want to bring that back. So I just brought a little teeny bit of it back by using this very low flow opacity and a very big brush. And all I did was tap. Whoops, I'm on the wrong, going the wrong way. Let's bring, bring it back by tapping. See, it just brings a tiny bit of it back without, if you go high opacity, this is what you're going to get. It's a grayish black and it's going to clash. So I just brought using very low opacity and a big brush, I just tapped and brought a little bit of it back around there, around that face, maybe even by the eye, just to show those two little whiskers up there sticking off her head. But now I've got too much of the tree showing. So I'm going to go raise the opacity up a little, brush down, and try to bring some of that texture back just around those two pieces and around right here, right there, down the edge of her nose, bring it right over her fur, now I want to sharpen this area of the nose and the eye a little bit more so I want to make sure to bring that part back with a very tiny brush because your eyes are your most important. I'm go around that. And she's got a little black right there by the eye that's coming down. That's not the background. And I'm going to go. I went too much over the fur right there at the side. There we go. See how that brought back the sharpness of the nose. And she still has a bluish cast to her. 
I'm going to take this back away. There, it's trimmed up pretty good. Um, to get rid of the bluish cast, I am going to lower the opacity, bring the brush size up, and mass just basically tap, which brings the texture over that area of the white. And then I'm going to put back on the nose, only the nose. Raise the opacity up and just get right here on the nose to make sure that nose isn't faded out. Whoops, too much there. Control Z is wonderful. Make sure her nose is sharp. There we go. And I might make sure this little section right there is pretty sharp of black. Now, let's uh, take her back out to full size. That looks very nice. Um, we still have a little darkness right there. So I'm going to mask away using low opacity, big brush, just tap on this to blend this better. Basically bringing the background right over her back and into her. So you can't tell where she starts and the brush strokes begin. And I'm also probably going to come down here and bring this grass up just a little bit on that corner. Now. She looks pretty good. She still could be a little bit warmer. Um, I have done absolutely no editing to her layer whatsoever. So at this point, I am going to try to sharpen her up a little bit and bring out some detail in her fur. Um, I'm going to try Topaz Clarity. And I like the fur and feathers choice. And there's two different ones. One has a little, this one has a little bit more saturation. As you can tell, this is one and this is two. And two may brought out a little more saturation, which I think might go better with the texture layer. So I'm going to try that one. Fur and feathers, one and two are two of my favorite ones. Oh yes, that brought out her color a little bit more to make those golden tones go with this a little better and it um, gave her fur a little bit more detail. Um, I'm going to try something else along the bottom of her. I don't know if it's going to work. This is an experiment. So let's just see what happens here. Um, under lens effects, there is a filter called graduated neutral density which will darken certain areas of the photo. Uh, I clicked on one of them and as you can see it darkened the leg right there and you can do another one which darkens less of it. So this one darkened on up into her chest and mouth. That may be a little too much. Uh, you can see before, after an adjustment and that's a little darker adjustment. Let's try this bottom quarter one stop. That's a slight adjustment that darkens this bottom edge of her to see if that will help uh, bring her in with the grass a little bit more. I don't know if I like that or not. Let's undo it. Yeah, I think I like it the way it is. Um, I could try, now I've gone on to the tools tab where I can move her around or flip her around. This is what it would be if she was on the other side. That's how the grass would be if I flipped her. I like her where she's at. I could scale her up just a little and bring her leg down by making her a little bigger, bring her even more into the grass. And scoot her around like this. I like that. Might have to bring a little bit more of that grass back there. So let's uh, go with a small brush on the lion layer 
and maybe a little bit bigger than that and go up there we go that part's bugging me right there there I'm just kind of scribbling with a low opacity small brush taking her away which is bringing the grass over her just a little bit more right there see what I meant about this takes a while it's a back and forth a back and forth of playing with it till you get something you like right now I like this pretty good I'm going to at this point go to the texture layer and duplicate it and put it on top and I'm going to play with some layer modes here let's see what that's darken that's just darkening her white areas multiply way too dark but I could go with a lower opacity like this bring it down and that would darken up things a little bit that's a 28 percent bright dark not sure if I like that for this image let's go down to and I'm still a low opacity here which is really where you should go is your lower opacity to start with because some of when it's at high opacity some of these look absolutely awful but I guess then you can tell how bad it would be to use um, that particular layer mode there's overlay which is one of my favorites soft light is my very favorite and there's hard light let's raise the opacity up all the way just to get a look okay that's hard light that's soft light off on it's made things all a little bit too harsh pull it all the way down and ease it up just trying to see if I'm specifically looking at this area right here the bottom area to see if anything stands out I'm back at that 28 percent again which is just a very tiny adjustment using the soft light layer over her over top of her which helps her fur pick up the color tones a little more from the texture maybe go a little bit further that's too much I'm also looking at this area right here because as you can see her fur is kind of cool and when you put this layer on it's adding that yellow right there but I think that's a little too much and of course you can mask any of this layer off if you don't want it but I like to do an overall adjustment like this and I turn it on and off like I'm doing now to see uh, what it does it helps her pick up the color tones it enriches these color tones a little bit more um, which I'm not sure if I like right here how it's darkening that but it also makes the brush strokes pop a little bit which I do like I like what it's doing to her not sure I like how it's darkening that a lot of times here I'll zoom out very far and see as I'm viewing it from far away I really like what it's done to her just not sure if I like that so there's one way to find out and that's to mask away this part of that layer and see how that looks so we'll use a big brush high opac or all the way up on opacity I'm just I'm just tapping not really brushing I'm just tapping with a very big brush now oh yeah now let's up the opacity on her just a little bit more that's all the way that's too much I think 50% I'm kind of liking that it's really helping her pick up the colors and because I masked this part away it's not affecting that um, not sure I like this I'm gonna mask away some of this 
to soften. I'm going to lower the opacity now and do just a little bit more masking away right here to kind of make it a gradual transition. Let's see about this white spot. Um, it made this a little bit bright. So I'm going to mask away some of that off of that layer at the top edge. And I might even mask away some of this top edge where this dark spot is. And this white area. See how the mask is coming out where it's remaining mostly on her. But and on the grass down here at the bottom, but not on these other areas that I didn't like. Okay, that's off and that's on. It helped enrich her a little bit. So let's zoom out a little. I like that. I'm trying to decide if I want her to be a little bit more painterly or if I like it as is. I could definitely go with it as is. I'm going to do, um, at this point, I'm going to do what's called uh, From Stack, which creates a new. Uh, a new image by combining all the layers that are visible, which this one on the bottom we're not using, so get rid of that. Let's do a from stack. Then I can decide. That way I have a, a layer that is saved uh, right here as with what I've created. Now I can duplicate that. So down here on the bottom is what I've already done. Now if I want to play a little bit more with some painterly stuff I can mess with say Topaz Impression which is a uh, painter program by Topaz an auto painting program and some of it um, works out pretty well with this program but I'm just playing right now with some of my presets in here to see if there's any painterly version using this software Ooh, that makes her nice and soft and dreamy interesting and of course you can on these painter layers you can uh, make the opacity whatever you want if you just want it slightly softened and then of course you can do any masking on the layer Mm. this is before this is after this is a very light uh, oil glaze preset I've created um, there is uh, a lot of presets in here and one of them is called oil glaze I think it's uh, I can't remember who created it it's in the it's in the uh, painting section um, and I just altered it to look the way I wanted and resaved it uh, as my own preset that really boosted the color now here's another one where the color is much um, more like the original image now see this kind of softens everything Here's one that uh, I call it overall smooth out. It basically smooths away any noise. Um, I've created one a long time ago called Simple, which also smooths away noise, but this one is even lighter than that as far as what it does. Um, I kind of like that one because she's got a little bit of noise in her, which I could have I could take that away. I'm going to go with this one and click on that and see what that did it just kind of it basically it applied the preset since this is a merged layer of everything it applied that one painting preset to the whole thing so now everything looks a little bit more cohesive we're here we've got this painting uh, the brush strokes and everything with a photo and that's fine um, I have no problem with that but sometimes I like 
the whole thing to kind of go together a little bit more. So by using the auto painting program with very, very light presets, you can accomplish that. Um, so this is after the preset and this is before. I'm going to turn off the merge layer. I'm going back down here to my lion. Right now we're viewing the original layers as they were because I've got these top two turned off, the merged ones. Um, I'm going to try something on the lion. I'm going to try to do a denoise on her because she looks, she's got a little bit of noise in there. Now that kind of smoothed everything out. The strong setting. Let's look at her eyes. That looks pretty good. Let's see if this makes any difference on her layer. Denoise is one of the longest ones it takes to run. Um, I think it's still, no, it's done. That didn't make a whole lot of difference. Now let's compare to the, uh, the painterly version I did using the impression software. I still like that one better. But let's try something else. Let's try running impression just on the lion with that same preset. Because the only thing I don't like about this one is it is softening these strokes a little bit more than I would like. And I could mask that away um, to bring them back. And I may do that. But I just want to see if I can run the painting preset on just her layer. So we're going to try that with that same preset. And of course, it shows the image as it originally was opened when you're on your own layer. Which makes, and I had reversed her, so that's why it looks different. Okay, there's the smooth out one. Doesn't look a whole lot different. That's after being smoothed out. And this is uh, before. Let's blow it up to her face. Let's redo that. Smooth out. Yeah, you can see it. It made just a little bit of difference. And it kept the, the brush strokes as I liked them. Now comparing that to this. See, the problem with running the overall smooth out on the whole thing like this is there is some texture in this background that I don't want to lose. Um, right, right in here, this canvas texture. See that canvas texture right there? Let's go up just a little more. You can see the details of it right around her body right there. See that... Uh, this, this texture, I don't know that I want to lose that. And when you run the overall smooth out on the whole thing, it really softens that. Now, like I said, I could mask it away. Um, I could put this layer back on and mask away, leaving just her smoothed out. But it, it pretty much does the same thing I've just done by running that same painting preset on just her layer. Um, I don't think I'm going to go with the smooth out on the whole thing. I'm going to delete that. Delete that layer. We're back where we started, but I've ran the denoise and the smooth out on just her. And leaving the painted background alone so I can retain that texture from the background. And I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see what it's done to her. When, when I put the soft light layer on. Well, see, I had masked away some of her fur right here. So it brought in some of the texture over her. 
And when I put that soft light layer on, it increased the intensity of that texture right over her, which makes her look like she's got the texture on her as well. I like that. I think I'm going to go with that with this line. So basically, to recap, I started with the texture on the bottom. I put her on top. I rearranged her. She was facing the other way. I made her face this way. So this light coming down where she is lit right here would hit that area a little bit more. It makes more sense. Um, she blended in with the grass real nicely on this side. We went over that with using very small brush and just back and forth, back and forth. Um, there's no quick way to do that. With the whiskers, I got rid of them all in the beginning. And then using a very big brush on the masking tab with a very low opacity, I brought back uh, just a little bit right here by just tapping this big brush so that it brought back a hint of the whiskers, but not all of the whiskers in detail. Uh, you just need a hint visible for the viewer to know that they're there. Um, if I would have tried to bring back all of it, the whiskers were... Uh, pretty bright white. Uh, they probably would not have looked right with this background being so bright white. Okay, after that, I denoised her. Well, I did a topaz clarity right here to bring out detail in her, and it also increased her saturation, giving her a little bit more golden tones here, which helped blend with this a little better down here and make more sense. Then I denoised her. After we went through the whole other process of merging the layer and trying to do an auto painting on the whole layer, I mean on the whole image, which I didn't like because it took away the texture from this background. Sometimes I like that. Sometimes um, if I cannot get the subject to look like it goes nicely with the background, I will run Topaz Impression on the whole thing, not worrying about the texture on the background, just so there everything looks cohesive and goes together. In this case, um, I, I liked after running denoise on her to take away some of that noise and running Topaz Impression, uh, a preset I've made called Overall Smooth Out, which basically just smooths that noise out a little bit more, any noise that's remaining, and kind of gives her a little bit uh, more of a, a softer look. Um, I ran that on her only, on her layer only, um, which left this layer, the texture layer, intact. Um, I had put, duplicated the texture, put it on top, set it to soft light at 49%, and I masked away some of that soft light layer over here where it made this too dark, this too bright, and this too dark, and this too bright. So basically, as you can see, my mask, it goes all around her to about right there. But yet the soft light layer remains on her and on this grass down here, which really pumps up the brush strokes and the colors a little bit more. Uh, it pumps up the brush strokes and color in the grass and pumps up her color and her um, brings in the texture color to her fur a little bit more by leaving that on her and on the grass. So now I'm happy with it. So now I'm going to do a from stack, which is basically merging everything. And at this point, I could do whatever else I want to do with my, this is my final image. So I could duplicate it. I could play with Topaz Adjust if I wanted to fiddle with the colors a little bit more. Like let's, if I want to make her even warmer, like that. Ooh, I like that. Um, there's a cold, brilliant cold, and brilliant warm. This is before. This is after. This is the brilliant warm before, after. Um, I actually kind of like that one. You can go through these different um, set uh, presets here that they have and try different things. See if anything appeals to you. There's a warm tone. And another warm tone. That one gives a little more purplish color. I kind of like that too.
Hmm. Well, I kind of like that one. Gives it a little bit more purplish. This is before where you can see some of the green undertones. And this really warms it up, gives it a little bit more purplish hues in these darker areas. I like that. Let's click OK on that. Because I've made this a, a duplicate layer, I can actually, uh, after this adjustment is made, oh no, I don't like it now. I don't know what that other preview was showing me. That's way too warm. This is why you duplicate your layer before you do something like this. I mean, you could always undo it completely, but because it's a duplicate layer, I can actually fiddle with opacity on that. But it's too warm at full opacity, that's for sure. Okay, this is before, and this is after, and I'm just raising the opacity up to get it somewhere like I might like it. That's before. This is with opacity at, I'm thinking, I'm trying to get around 30%. 30% is, seems to be my magic number. Topaz does a lot of things very strongly. Uh, over they, It's overdone, basically. So a lot of times I have to do things on separate layers and then lower those opacities down like I've done here. Um, I do like this warmer tones and how it added that purplish, purplish hues in there. But I always do this at the very end. I zoom out very small as if I'm viewing this across the room and I decide that's without it, that's with it. Let's lower that down to 20. That just gives it a slight touch of that. I think I like that better. Bring it back slowly as if you're walking closer to it. Because if you think about it, you know, we zoom in and we look at, we pixel peep. We look at every little pixel, every little whisker, everything. But if this is printed and hanging on a wall or printed on a pillow or a shower curtain or something like that, um, it's going to be viewed from a distance. Usually most people aren't going to put their face right up in it. So I like to view it as others would view it, which is at a distance. And so that's why I zoom out. And then I'll slowly come back in as if I'm walking closer to it. This lets me know if I have any areas I'm not happy with. And then now I'm all the way back where I was. And I'm pretty happy with this. The only thing I can think of I might want to do is sharpen up her eye a little bit. But on the other hand, since I've smoothed out the rest of her, that might look a little weird. So I think I'm going to leave her alone and call it done at this point. Now when I click OK, it's automatically going to create a merged layer of these two. I don't have to do it here again unless I'm going to do something else with it at this point and I want a separate layer. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything else. I can't think of anything else I'd like to do. I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm just going to click OK, which is going to take me out of Topaz and back to PaintShop Pro with the final image. There we go. So I, as you can see, let's undo this. I started with this texture. This is what I was planning on working with one of my lions. And one of my lions in the sun that had a lot more golden tones to him uh, or her, this might have worked really well with that. But for this image, with her tones that she had without really messing with her tones a lot, this particular version of the background worked better. So this is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to give her a name and put my signature right down here on the bottom. And that will be it for today. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy using this uh, painted background. Have a great day.